these are pictures of me a little weird aren't they uh, there is a background story to this which i'll talk to you in a bit i was at this subway outlet with a teenager called flo king in a posh chennai suburb adjoining urur a slum habitat by a, beside a beautiful beach by the bay of bengal flo king lived in urur and here he was with me the strange looking academic of a certain age who he couldn't connect to absolutely but he agreed to be interviewed he couldn't take me home and a little nervous about entering the subway for the first time in his life by the way whose employees were kind of mystified by the strange duo who walked in one afternoon to eat their sandwiches i got talking with flo about his dexterity with facebook how he fashions his timeline how he uploads all those pictures out comes his phone which is by the way his gateway to the world of the internet a third hand iphone got for 2000 rupees in the rotating market he quickly takes some pictures of me refashions them on his mobile phone app called photophonia and puts them on to the internet i froze i mean in wonderment at floking tech savviness but dismayed in how these photos are going to look so i nervously asked flo where are they going to nest on the internet and who are going to see these pictures more importantly right and i asked him if he could pull it down kindly this story tells more about me than flo about my social location about my discomfort you know though i was in wonderment with flo who became a friend in facebook and in life and the discomfort this friendship gave me in the initial years but it shattered a few of my assumptions about teenagers and social media if you're still wondering who i am and what i do for a living i am a social anthropologist and a technology researcher i hang out with people like flo king you must be wondering why just to understand what these teens who have so little resources do with social media how are they even able to afford their phones how are they energizing their data packs right and what meaning are they finding on facebook as an anthropologist i look for meanings what does facebook mean to them what kind of value it is adding to his life i'll walk you through three stories actually one of them is about facebook and teenagers and what they do with them apparently they do a lot with facebook they tease and tantalize facebook to produce romantic illusions about women who are otherwise inaccessible about a mobile phone mystery who in his earlier life was a watchmaker about a cyber cafe wala in daravi who grew strength to strength as a tech entrepreneur all of these stories are emblematic of the power of the internet and how humans persist with it for livelihoods for relationships for citizenship and most of all for self expression it seems those at the margins are even more passionate and ingenious with these technologies if only to surpass the constraint in their contexts yeah so what does this look like it's a tool house this is a place where mobile phones are brought to life you know a, a, a paraphernalia look at look at those, all those dead phones there yadav is a mobile phone mystery a title which my dear colleague asa dora gave him mystery as an artist who breathe life and activate stiff mobile phones yadav lives in a mumbai shanti town where his family squatted long long time ago when they came from their little village in up Yadav dropped out of school at 14 and one lazy summer he labeled bottles for a pharmacist to fund his Gioni smartphone right he coaxed his father to give up this watchmaking business and do something with technology technology was the way to go right so in this little hole in the wall he squeezed in a multi servicing shop that sold mobile accessories sim cards and of course something that could repair phones over overhauling objects is in my blood he told me right but how did yadav learn to repair phones he apprenticed his way in a phone seller shop 
picking up the ropes of mobile phone repair. Once he saved enough money, he spent 22,000 rupees learning software to flush, reform, reconstruct and resuscitate phones. He had a loyal clientele who came to him to galvanize his phones and hordes of teenagers who begged him to download the leanest and the meanest media player and perhaps a browser that could open five simultaneous tabs on their smart devices, right? Yadav did this very happily, not as a businessman, but as the, the esoteric status it bestowed on him. He was a tech guru, the go-to man, who could download any kind of magic software onto phones. Yadav was then the IT hub of his community. His occupation did not understand his caste, his class or his social location. His tech entrepreneurship thrives amidst the pitiless meritocracy of the global tech industry, right? These are images of cyber cafes. One of them is in Dharavi and all of them are in urban slums. So there, there lives a cyber cafe, a bustling cyber cafe, a few kilometers from this wonderful TEDx stage, run by a kinetic bunch of people who came long way from Tamil Nadu, which is now a, a depot for computing hardware and internet enabled services, a slew of communication services, desktop publishing, a, serving, a surfing zone, a gaming tract, a small IT tutoring unit, in short, 4G enabled services. Selvam didn't want to sell cotton in Mumbai. He wanted to be a tech entrepreneur, right? He started with a telephone booth a Xerox machine and six PCs with cracked windows, right? He loaded cracked windows on them. He couldn't afford the original software. Now he boasts of 35 PCs, the surfing zone, the gaming tract, all of that. And his cafe is open to the public 16 hours a day, right? And he gets his tech help from Madurai. His cousin Muthu is actually a hotshot at managing software. Selvam once confessed, he said, he fancies the role he plays as an intermediary between the online and the offline context. And his status was building the socio-technical business ecosystem. And he also mentioned that if he can, he wanted to buy software that he, cannot, he did not pirate, right? He wanted to play a fair game. This made me realize that the ceiling was really low in the informal market and the yearning to get out of this informality. You will know what they are very soon. Mental karta hai, it blows my mind, said 15 year old Kuldeep in 2011. He lives in Hafizpeh in Hyderabad, another resource stressed ecosystem in the high tech quarters of the city. He loves, he adores the mobile internet and fetches it for 5 rupees a day, which, has, which is cataclysmic in the lives of teenagers like Kuldeep. Now, what does, what does Kuldeep do with mobile internet? As a social anthropologist, I wanted to understand what meaning does this hold in their lives? What value was Facebook giving them? And what else did they do on the mobile internet, which they had to shell out money? You know, I mean, I mean was it worth it, right? What value did they found out of it? Apparently, they found a lot of value on Facebook, especially. Atif, his friend, who named himself after the cute singer, has started chatting with this young woman from London. They had exchanged phone, phone numbers and even phone calls, right? So Atif has friended a woman way out of his league, sophisticated, educated and global, right? So this set off something amidst the other teenagers, right? They looked at Facebook as something where they can upfriend women. They asked themselves, is it possible? Yes, this guy was chatting with this girl from London, so Bindas. Facebook could actually do it. Dina, this is Dina's timeline. He discovered timeline as soon as Facebook had enabled their site with this feature. His timeline is full of hip hop images, his own dance videos, a Mercedes Benz. You, know, you see, you see Justin Bieber there, right? He lovingly crawls the website looking for images that resonates with his aspirations, with his own aspirations, right? 
I asked Dina, why is he uploading all these, all these physical and muscle men onto his website? It's easy to aspire to have a physique, ma'am, than to work at Microsoft. He had made a huge point about realistic aspirations here. Mudha sir does it differently. His timeline is full of Islamic history and his Facebook feeds are from a trusted group of friends and people who shared news. And Mudha sir in his turn spread this news to a small coterie of his own friends. Ah, this is very interesting. These are people who live in Film Nagar, interesting name. Film Nagar is another resource stressed ecosystem in uh, Hyderabad where people from all across India come to get a toehold in Tollywood, the biggest film industry in India, actually it's Tollywood. So they force their relationships on Facebook with technicians, with cinematographers, with stars, you know. So they lovingly cover and coordinate their timelines with these pictures. So Facebook is functioning like their external hard disk, right? Their white space, which they forge intimate relationship with all these people. See, look at that picture there, right? That's uh, the Bahubali star, Prabhas. And here's Kiran, who is kind of posing with him, right? And there's Samantha. Samantha is a huge star and they lovingly kind of uh, flourish their timelines with the pictures. There is Pavan Kalyan right on top, right? And these, and this is, this is, uh, this made me realize that Facebook is this, is this uh, intermediary that actually brings them into a relationship with their stars. Some of them even friend them, right? So interesting. Now, where are the women in my talk, right? There are no women in my talk, right? So you see, look at these pictures. They're all about men, male bonding. All of them are sitting in street corners, most of the time discussing internet. How to use the mobile internet, how to download this, this player which won't take too much space, which is the latest mobile internet deal going on in that day. So they are, they are exchanging expertise to work their internets on their phone. And this space is inaccessible to a teenaged girl. It's in the public eye. How would she be part of this? Right? And in, and in those years, they're not even equipped to find these jobs which people like Kuldeep find to fund their phones and their data packs. So young teenager girls miss out a lot on their formative years to all the social affordances that internet is able to energize to their male counterparts. This is really a gendered story that I'm telling you. Okay, I want to leave you with this image, one of my favorite. It's also my favorite gang of boys from Urur. And this is the, if, this is the message I want to leave you with. Technology bends to the whims and fancies of the user, especially if the user lives in a stressed ecosystem on the brink of aspirations. Technology then really gives flight to their fancy. Thank you.